Hey everyone, welcome back to the video. In this video, we are going to see how we can use Databricks workspace and how we can create a compute cluster in Databricks workspace. It's too long that I haven't uploaded any video, but now I'm going to upload video when I get time and it will be help very helpful for you. So let's see how we can create the Databricks compute. So for that creating the cluster, you have to come to this menu and that is compute menu in the Databricks. So once you come in the compute menu, just click on that. Now here you can see you will get multiple options in the compute menu. Here you can create all purpose cluster, then job compute, SQL warehouses, then cluster pools. Also you can set up the cluster policies related to your organization and your specific requirements as well as it allows you to configure the different types of app like apps uh, rstudio etc now we are going to create all purpose compute cluster in the databricks workspace now here you can see you can filter it by created by and uh, also you have multiple options like create with different compute clusters right so now for creating new databricks compute cluster you have to come to here and that is the create compute button so you just need to click on the create compute button once you click on the create compute button it will bring you to this page and that is compute page so here let's see what this page exactly and here you can see on the top it's from compute and here new computes and then you are creating your compute. Now, this is the your cluster name and by default, it's linked with my account. So it's created Akshay Rathod cluster, right? So you can change uh, your cluster name such as demo cluster or whatever the name that specify your requirements or your organization's requirement. Now here policy, the first thing you can select. Now you have different option for selecting the policies like unrestricted personal compute and multiple policy. Also you can create your own policy as well that we will see in future lectures. Okay. Now for this time, I am going to make it this unrestricted policy and that is the simple. Here the second thing you can see is you can create the clusters with multi node as well as single node. Multi node cluster will deploy your workers on different virtual machines. And if you do it single node, it will deploy all your workers on the same machine. So let's see what are the configurations in the multi node clusters. Okay. Here access mode, you have to select the access mode. And you have three types of access mode that is the single user, then shared, and here no isolation shared. So we will see what those modes exactly later. For now, I am going to use single user, and in shared, also you can share your compute cluster with multiple users. But for now, I am going to make it single user, and here you can see single user or group name. So from here, you can search your user and apply it for now i am the only one user in this databricks workspace so you can see my name is highlighted here after that performance databricks runtime version now this is the specific version of spark python scala and r that usually used by databricks and i will suggest if you are doing it your for your personal use then in that case you use the recommended version because that is you can see LTS that is the uh, latest stable release version and uh, right now it's a runtime version 15.4 and here you can see it uses Scala uh, 2.12 and Spark 3.5.0 that are almost the latest version of Scala and Spark. Now you can see you have option like use photon accelerator. So if you hover on the information button, you will see the photon accelerator is a modern engine on Apache Spark that will help you to like optimize your workload and query performance or in a better way. Okay. 
after that you can see worker types and you have various different types of workers that you can select right now it's a standard uh, d4 ds v5 that is selected it has 16 gigabytes of ram and four cores standard here you can see multiple options you have uh, you can select here so there are various options you can see 16 gigabits of ram i usually select this standard ds3 v2 that has 14 gigabits of ram and four cores it is little bit uh, convenient and we are not using that much so it's good then here minimum number of workers and maximum number of workers you can select so uh, it will auto deploy the other worker so here minimum it is two but I can make it one and maximum it's by default eight. So I'm going to make it two. After that, it is asking you for spot instance. So by hovering on this button, you can see what the spot instance is. And you will see when I uh, will create the Azure related tutorials there, I will deeply explain what is the spot instances in Azure. So now I'm going to uncheck this to use the spot instance. Okay. After that, the driver type and here you can see uh, same as the worker that is one option and uh, that's why it come here like 14 gigabits of memory and four cores that is our uh, d uh, this ds3 v2 machine okay otherwise for your driver you can select other machines as well depending on your requirements after that here you can see enable auto scaling so by default you can enable auto scaling by checking this for now i am not going to check this then terminate after so you can terminate your cluster after a specific idle time so by default it shows 120 minutes but you can reduce it to maximum 10 minutes so i am going to make it 20 minutes it means if i am not using my cluster my cluster is idle for 20 minutes then by default it will terminate the cluster and it will help me to reduce the cost of my databricks cluster then here you can specify tags according to your organization or your personal needs in the key and value pairs okay and also you have some advanced options as well so let's see what are the advanced options that are provided so the first one is spark configs so here you can provide the specific spark configuration that you need and also you can provide the like environment variables for spark so here you can see PySpark Python and that is Databricks Python 3 it is used here so you can also specify it other in next lines so it will treat that after that logging by default logging is not configured but you can configure the logging in DBFS or uh, your specified sources logging location you can specify here you just need to give the log path after that in its scripts so from here by clicking uh, on this plus icon you can upload the init scripts init scripts are basically the shell script that are run on the virtual machines or on your like worker machines before starting or before uh, launching the spark clusters okay so you can specify your init scripts basically they are the shell scripts you can choose location and you can add your init scripts here so this is overall like what are the required things for creating the Databricks cluster in Azure Databricks. Okay. Now let's come here and uh, you can see this is this box. It shows the cost, right? So here like eight workers, you can see uh, that is this much memory and this much course. So here eight workers standard okay that is the spot instance huh. yeah so i can reduce the number of workers here also so i'm going to reduce it to one so you can see now it's 14 gigabits of ram and four cores the cost is reduced right so it will show the driver memory and uh, like driver cores as well and your databricks runtime okay also it shows like is photon accelerator on or not so here you can see photon accelerator then it will show what is your uh, like machines you are using and it will show the cost for the databricks so it's a 3 dbu per hour 
approximately 3 dbu per hour means it's around uh, you can say 1 dollar uh, per hour kind of cost you will see so let's see these are our worker machines worker types okay so i am going to choose only one worker these are all the configuration so we are not using uh, two heavy things right now so i am going to make it single mode. okay if i do the single node you can see the things are changing so right now all other things are same you can use this all options for the access modes but here once you come at the worker you can see you have you can choose the workers here and here driver is also but now here let's see 3 dbu per hour if i reduce this if i remove the photon acceleration then you can see it's around 1.5 dbu per hour and uh, yeah so this is all things i am not going to change let's collapse the advanced settings as well okay so this is our cluster configuration and uh, for creating the cluster you just need to click on this create compute button once you click on this create compute button your cluster deployment will be start so i just click on that so now this is uh, once you create the cluster this is the page and here you can see demo cluster and it's starting and if you uh, like click on this or you just hover on this it is provisioning your cluster right and this is the cluster page you can see all the details here so now let's see what are the tabs and functionalities that are available in your cluster page first of all this configurations page where you have all the configurations then this notebook page whatever notebooks are attached to this cluster those all notebooks are listed in the list format here and that you can see then this is the library page from here you can install specific libraries in your cluster for that you just need to click on this blue install libraries button and from here you can install libraries to your cluster such as from a specific file path provided libraries you can install after that from pypy maven and here other options are also provided so you can install all this library to your cluster you just click search the library click on the install and the library is installed in your cluster then here event logs are there and here you can see compute session uh, created so now in this events log you will get like all the events like when your compute started when your compute stopped that kind of events are logged here this is the well-known spark ui and uh, here you can see once your cluster is up you can choose your spark ui to debug your spark job or spark application and optimize them also you can open your spark ui in other like applications so or other web page so you can see this is the option here that you can use now this is the driver logs it will show like whatever the logs that your driver had and uh, here it has like standard output logs and also at the end you have log 4j logs for your driver also you can filter it from here then uh, matrix so our cluster is not set up yet but databricks uh, clusters behind the scene use ganglia matrix so you can go to that page and you can use the cluster matrix after that uh, this is the common section that is app once the cluster is up you can access this and you can use the r studio and that kind of apps to configure with your databricks notebooks and after that this tab is uh, same that is the spark ui that we saw here it's just a copy of that your spark and if you want to see your clusters just click on this compute option once and here you can see uh, your cluster and its status is shown here you just hover on that and you can see starting spark so your cluster is being started then you can list like policies whatever run times and other matrices of your spark cluster here now this is the option from here you can like uh, clone your cluster delete your cluster or edit permission to your cluster and once your spark cluster is up 
you will get other options like terminate your cluster stop your clusters attach your clusters that kind of option also you will get in that three dot menu yep. now you can see our cluster is up and here you can see cluster is running and you will get this dot and now this uh, details are also uh, like here right so now you click here you can see the restart option is also there and uh, on this option on this button you can terminate your cluster with the help of this button so this is basically how you can use the databricks cluster how you can create the databricks cluster its different configuration and on all other options in the future lecture we will dive deep into the cluster policies and the different access layers of the clusters and all but for now this is the thing and uh, if you have any questions related to the databricks clusters and how you can do that and also you can like the cost of the databricks cluster is overall cost like your databricks units as well as uh, whatever your azure on azure side uh, whatever the resources are there okay so i will show you one more thing here and uh, that is at the azure side so here you can see i am going to refresh my azure page and here uh, these are the all resources in azure so i am going to show you the all resources so here you can see i have multiple resources deployed right now and now you can see this one and this one these are two virtual machine one for driver and one for worker nodes uh, along with that you can see there are like four disks that are uh, assigned here then also some network interfaces like four network interfaces are also there and some other off like uh, required things that are also here so these are the resources that azure created behind the scenes for our databricks right so this is our cluster and now how you can terminate your cluster is uh, for now i am just going to show you how you can terminate so just click on this and here it will ask you are you sure you want to terminate your cluster yeah i am really sure and just click on the confirm button and your cluster is terminated so it will take some time to terminate your cluster terminating the cluster means it will clean up the resources in your azure resource group or in your azure resources so you won't have encountered the cost for that but if you just stop your cluster then your virtual machines are not used uh, but in that case you have to pay for the ip that is public ip and uh, some small cost for the azure disk but that's a minimal cost so you can see now i have terminated my cluster you can see i can delete my cluster from here and just i'm going to delete so now i have deleted my cluster so this is the way how you can create the clusters in the databricks so if you have any questions or any queries related to this then feel free to ask me in the comment section below i will always be there for uh, help and thank you so much and if you like this video then please do share this video with your friends and all data enthusiasts uh, i will keep posting the such uh, informative videos and we will see you in the next video till then happy coding